This is the world's most compact 160 watt multi-port charger despite having a screen on it. This is a mammoth 300 watt output power bank with some truly unique features. And this is a 14 in one docking station with a control wheel and a button and I am super excited to show these to you guys. Now, I've been using and recommending Anchor's products in my videos for at least three years now simply because of their quality and performance. And none of those videos were sponsored. So when Anchor reached out and showed me these new products from their top tier prime line of devices and asked to sponsor this video, it was an immediate yes from me. Which already says a lot because I turn down literally over a thousand sponsorships a year and only accept maybe three to six partnerships a year with brands that I personally love and use. And spoiler alert, these products do not disappoint. So let's get started. I am super excited for this charger because up until recently, I've been recommending Anchor's previous Prime charger, which could do 100 total watt output out of these three ports here. And this has been my go-to travel charger for the past couple years. But now we have a newer version with a 160 watt total output with three USB-C ports and a smart display on it as well, which I really can't wait to check out. So enough chatting, let's get this out of the box. Inside we get the charger wrapped up in some paper. Let's take that off. That is a slick looking charger and the size difference like it's not that much larger at all for a lot more power. This is super impressive. All right, let's set this aside and see if there's anything else in the box. So we get a little instruction card showing us how to use the smart display and we also get a quick start guide with a QR code to the user guide. So that's everything we get in the box. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the charger itself. At the bottom, we get three USB-C ports. Each one's capable of outputting 140 watts individually or collectively they can output 160 watts. On the front of it, you can see that the prongs do fold in for easy traveling. And if we plug it in, that's when we get some really cool features. So as you can see, there's a display on it, which is really cool for a charger, but it's also really useful. So if I plug a device in, the charger is going to tell me what type of cable was connected and it'll show me how much power is going to that device. If I plug a second device in, it'll show me the total power going to both devices. And if I tap this button, it'll show me the breakdown of that power. And if I had a third device plugged in, it would show me the full distribution of all the power. If I tap it again, it'll show me the temperature of the charger. Tapping it again allows me to enable something called dual laptop mode. So if I double tap this now, dual laptop mode will be enabled and it'll prioritize the power going to two connected laptops and any remaining power will go to the third device. If I double tap it again, I'll switch back to AI mode and this just intelligently distributes the power based on what's connected. Tapping it again takes it to the Bluetooth mode and that's because there's actually an application that goes along with this charger and I'll show you that in a minute. And if you tap this again, it takes you back to the main screen. Now, before we talk about the application, I do want to show you guys the power bank first because this also has an application and it's actually really similar between the two of them. So I'm going to show you the application for both of them at the same time. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this now. This product really caught my attention because not only is it a smart power bank with a display on it, but it has a battery capacity of 26,000 milliamp hours and a maximum output power of 300 watts with a single port capable of outputting 140 watts, which is the max charge speed on a lot of laptops. So inside the box, we get the power bank all wrapped up. And by the way, there's some really cool ports here on the bottom and I'll explain what this does in a little bit. Under that, we get a, oh, this is like a really nice uh, feeling carrying case. It's smooth, it almost feels like a faux leather type material. It's pretty nice. And under that, we get a braided USB-C to C cable. Then we get a quick start guide with a QR code to the full guide. On the top, we get two USB-C ports, each capable of 140 watts output. And we also get a 22 and a half watt USB-A port. And if you look here on the left, it says in out. And that's because you could charge the power bank with both ports at the same time for a total of 250 watt charging. That's, that's pretty awesome. And this is also an airplane safe charger. So this is still small enough that it's not gonna be an issue bringing it on a plane. Now let's take a look at what the button does. And to best demonstrate it, I just plugged in two devices. So if I press the button once, it'll show me how much power is left in the power bank. And it'll also show me how much power is going out of the ports or into the ports. If I press the button again, I can see each individual port and how much power is going out to each port. And if a port is not connected, it's just grayed out. Pressing it again shows me the temperature of the power bank. 
Pressing the button again shows the Bluetooth connection status because yes, this power bank does come with an application so you can control part of it from your phone instead of directly with these buttons here. And I'll show you guys that in a minute. If you don't wanna use that Bluetooth functionality, you can just double press and it disables the Bluetooth. And speaking of double pressing, if you go to the main screen and double press here, it'll enable trickle charge for the USB-A port. And this is something you can use if you're charging smaller electronics that don't need that extra power. And if you wanna disable that feature, just double press again from the main screen. A hidden feature with this is if you shake it four times, it'll start a 25 minute timer. And this is for, it's sort of like a focus timer. Basically, you do some focus work for 25 minutes, then take a five minute break, and then you work for 25 minutes again. So this is a pretty niche thing, but it's neat that it's there. If you wanna cancel the timer, just press the button on the side and it turns the timer off. And since this power bank has motion sensors in it, it means you can turn the power bank in any orientation and the screen will actually adjust accordingly based on whichever way you turn it. All right, so I just did a bunch of different charge tests to see how many different devices I could charge with a single full power bank. When it comes to smartphones, if you're charging completely dead smartphones, like literally 0% to 100%, you should get about four charges for moderately sized batteries, which would be something like the Galaxy Z Fold 6 or the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which have about 4,200 to 4,400 milliamp hour batteries. But if you have a larger battery like the Galaxy S25 Ultra, which has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, you can expect about three and a half charges from completely dead. If you're gonna charge a completely dead tablet, it depends on obviously the size of the tablet. So this is a Galaxy Tab S11 Ultra, and you can expect to get about one and a half charges for this. But keep in mind that this is an 11,600 milliamp hour battery. Most tablets have a much smaller battery than this. So if you had a more normal sized tablet, you should expect about two full charges. And it's also worth pointing out that this power bank is capable of charging all of these devices at their maximum charge speed. When it comes time to charge this device, it does support 250 watt charging if you use both the USB-C ports at the top. So let's go ahead and test that now with a 100 watt anchor charger and the brand new 160 watt anchor charger. So we'll plug the 160 watt charger in first and you'll see 150 watts right there on both of them. Now we'll go ahead and plug in the 100 watt charger. We get a dual port recognized there. And sure enough, we get the full 250 watt charging shown here at the bottom. And if I press the button, you can see the distribution with 150 watts coming from this charger and the other 100 watts coming from that charger. And I did do a full charge test on this from about 2% all the way up to 100%. And it took just under 51 minutes using this 250 watt charging method. But the craziest part is I got to 50% charged in less than 12 minutes. And the reason the last 50% took longer is because as the battery heats up, it does have to slow down charging a little bit. But regardless, about 50 minutes to fully charge a 26,000 milliamp hour battery is <laughs> pretty impressive. While we're talking about charging, let's talk about these charging pins at the bottom. So you can get a separate charging base and that'll let you just place the power bank on the base to start charging at 150 watts. And when you're not charging the power bank, the base has three other ports for charging other devices with up to 150 watts. And if you're charging both the power bank and other devices using the base at the same time, you get a total of 150 watts distributed between all of the connected devices. While this is charging up, let's take a quick look at the application that can be used with both the power bank and the charger. So right now it's connected to the power bank. And if I tap that in the anchor application, it shows the current battery percentage, how much it's charging out of each port. It shows the total input wattage over time. You have the battery temperature below that, and you get the charging protocols at the bottom there. You can also change the charging mode. So the default is the smart dynamic allocation, and this just adjusts charging depending on what's connected to it. You have a power saving mode, which extends the life of the battery and the devices you're charging, but you may not charge quite as fast. And there's even a custom mode, and you can tap to add a mode, and this allows you to adjust the output of each port individually. So for the C1 port, I can drag this all the way out and have 140 watts there. And I can limit my C2 port to maybe 45 watts. And the USB-A port can charge at a maximum of 22 watts. And you could also change the maximum input speeds as well. If I tap the real-time data arrow, I can see a chart of the input power over time. And you'll also be able to see a chart of the output power if something was connected. And scrolling down, you can see the power, the current over time, and the voltage over time and you can see that for each port individually. So you do get a lot of information in this application. 
If you tap the settings gear in the upper right corner, you get a bunch of extra settings, including things like screen settings. And if I enable this, it gives me a clock style screensaver, and then I can tap that and choose different style clocks. At the bottom of this page, there's a firmware update option. And as you can see, there's an update available for my power bank. All I have to do is unplug it, then just tap update, and I'll get a little rocket ship update icon on the power bank, as well as a little progress meter. If I tap on the 160 watt power adapter, you'll see that it gets connected and I can see how much power it's outputting on each port. I get a real time data section, just like on the battery bank. And I can even enable or disable different ports. So if I turn off this charging port right here, you'll see that the power bank stops charging. Then I can turn the port back on and then it'll start charging again. So that is really cool. It even tells you what type of cable is connected. At the bottom, we can change the charging mode and you have a smart mode, which changes how much power is being delivered to each port based on what's connected. You have a standard mode, which allows you to have a port priority for a specific port or even a dual laptop mode. So if you have three devices connected, you can make sure both laptops get priority and the third device gets whatever's left over. There's also a custom mode here as well. And this is very similar to the mode that I showed you guys with the power bank. But there is one added feature here called automatic deactivation. And this will automatically turn the port off when whatever's connected to it stops charging. And this is a really good way to make sure that whatever devices you're charging charge up to 100%, but then don't continuously charge overnight. Another great feature with this power bank is that you can actually charge the power bank and another device at the same time. So if I unplug this cable and plug it into this device instead, you'll see that I'm getting a charge here. It's telling me that I'm charging another device, but at the same time, the power bank itself is still charging. So it works sort of like a power pass through and any extra power goes to charging these batteries. And it even tells you that it's in pass through mode at the bottom right here. And this does work with both ports. So if I plug another device in, you'll see that I'm now charging the watch and the phone while also keeping the power bank full. Now let's take a look at the Anchor Prime DL7400 docking station, which is a 14 in one docking station. That's got some really unique features that I can't wait to show you guys. So let's get this out of the box. And in case you're not familiar, a docking station allows you to connect your laptop with a single cable to a bunch of different peripherals. This could be multiple monitors, keyboards and mice, webcams, USB devices, and even wired headphones while also charging your laptop at the same time. In the box, we get the docking station itself. Under the dock, we get a QR code for the user guide and another QR code to activate a two year warranty. In this large box, we get the power cable and the USB-C to C cable that you use to connect your laptop to the docking station. Taking a look at the ports on the back of the dock, we see our power input port all the way here on the right side. And since the power supply is built into the dock, you just need this one cable to power it. You don't need a separate power brick. The next port is the USB-C computer port. And this is the port that you plug your laptop into using the included USB-C to C cable. We then get two HDMI ports and one display port. The display port is always capable of outputting 8K at 30 Hertz, even if you also plug in two extra monitors to the HDMI ports. However, you can get an 8K 30 Hertz output out of each HDMI port as well, as long as that's the only monitor plugged in. And here's a chart from Anchor showing you the maximum resolution and refresh rate of each port in different configurations. After that, we get two five gigabit USB-A ports and then a peripheral USB port, which you could use for a wired mouse or keyboard or a wireless transceiver for a keyboard or mouse. And the last port is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, which is faster than most people's internet speed. On the side, we get a dial and button, and I'll show you guys what that's for in a minute. So now I'm gonna plug this in and show you some of the really cool features. When you first plug the dock in, you'll be asked to select a language, and you can turn this dial to scroll up and down through the languages. Then just press the dial in to select the language. Then you're taught how to use the dial, which again is just turning and pressing the button. And now you're ready to go. So once the dock is powered up and connected to your laptop, it's gonna grab the time and date from the laptop and display it on the screen when you're not interacting with the dial. But as soon as you turn the dial, you'll be able to see some more information. So the first screen here shows you how much power is being delivered to the laptop in real time. And you'll also get meters at the bottom to show you how much power is coming out of each one of these ports. So if I plug in my Galaxy S25 Ultra, It'll update the screen and show me how much power is being delivered to the S25 Ultra. These front ports also support data pass-through, so you can connect peripherals to your computer right through these front ports instead of having to plug them directly into the laptop. And this also means that while I'm fast charging my Galaxy S25 Ultra, I can also access the data on it from my computer as well. 
And if I click the button while I'm on this screen, it'll show me a bit more information. So not only will it show me how much power the laptop is consuming, but it'll also show me the voltage and current. And if I turn the wheel, I can see each port individually. If I wanna go back to the other screen, I can just turn the dial to the back option and press the dial in again, and I'm back here. If I turn the dial further, I can see my connected displays. So you can see I only have the display port connected right now, and it shows my current output resolution and refresh rate. And if I click this button in, I could scroll through each display port to get more information. Turning the dial from the main screen again shows the performance mode, and this basically just tells you how hot the dock is getting. As you can see, it's a very low temperature, and the fan speed is at its lowest speed. Turning the dial again it takes us to our settings, and from here you can change things like the screen brightness, the screen timeout period, right now it's set to 30 seconds. You can change the knob orientation, so right now it's set to forward, but if I set this to backward, it's gonna change which direction I need to turn the knob to move forward and backwards through the menus. Screen saver lets you change what the clock looks like. So the default clock looks like this one here, but you do have a handful of different options depending on your liking. Personally, I really like this one with the blue outline, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. Below that, you can change your clock format from a 12 hour clock to a 24 hour clock if you prefer. You also have a few different languages to pick from, and you can also reset all the settings. On the left side, you'll see two SD card slots. So we have a full size SD card slot on the bottom and it sticks in just a little bit like that. And then we have a micro SD card slot on the top. And on the right side, we get a headphone jack. And I also tested the two and a half gigabit ethernet port speed with a local transfer. And I was actually able to hit that full two and a half gigabit speed. Just for giggles, I wanted to see how far I could push the display port, and I was able to get almost 8K resolution at 120 hertz. This is Samsung's 57 inch ultra wide monitor. So it's about half the vertical resolution for 8K, which is probably why I was able to hit 120 hertz. And I'm also connected to a 2025 Razer Blade 18 laptop. So that also helps with getting these high resolutions at a high refresh rate. And if you're connected to a powerful laptop like the Blade 18, which does require a 400 watt power supply in order to hit its maximum performance, you can still connect that power supply to the dedicated power port and connect the dock at the same time. The laptop will get all of its power from the dedicated power supply and the dock will still connect all the peripherals like the monitor and anything else that's connected to the dock. Anchor's been running some huge launch discounts for these products, and I'll have links to each product in the description and pinned comment if you're interested. And let me know if you have any specific questions about these products in the comments below, and I'll get back to as many as I can. Or if you want to see another deep dive tech review, you can check out this one here. That's it for this tech episode. Jesus loves you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.